Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explain discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time we're again joined by Derek Bittner and special guest Ash Paulson, who's a writer for Game On, to discuss a new teaser trailer for Pokemon Omega Ruby and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. So let's get started. Alright guys, so this came out a few days ago with a uh, brand new teaser trailer for Pokemon Omega Ruby and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. And it really is like the quintessential teaser trailer, um, showing just a brief few seconds from the game. And even then, uh, just from um, you know what appears to be a cutscene. Uh, although, interestingly, that does appear to be entirely new. But we'll get to that in a few moments. Um, so real quick, before we get to that, um, I know you're a big Pokemon fan, Ash, and since you weren't on our last discussion, I thought we'd just get your quick overall thoughts on this whole thing. And, uh, you know, now that we know for sure that this is in fact a remake and not like some spin-off game I, you know, theorized it could be, um, what, are you, what are your thoughts on, uh, on them remaking these two games? Uh, well, I'm super excited. I mean, uh, I was always a big fan of Generation 3. I know a lot of people actually were not, um, but I, I don't know, I, I actually went back and played Generation 3 uh, when Diamond and Pearl were already out, and I just really, I wasn't a big fan of Gen 4, but I went back and played uh, Gen 3, and I just loved it. I loved the region, I loved the, uh, a lot of the Gen 3 exclusive Pokemon, and I know that's not a very popular opinion, but I've been kind of waiting for them to remake Generation 3 for a while now, and I'm, I figured it was coming sooner or later, and I'm glad it finally is here. And uh, I, I, I really liked X and Y. I liked the engine. I thought that the visuals were great, other than the lack of 3D. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this region in uh, you know, X and Y's 3D engine. So since you were just talking, Ash, um, let's start off with your impressions of this like 12 seconds of footage or whatever it was. Uh, what do you think of what you've seen here so far? Uh, I mean, it, it, it looks great, but I mean, just by virtue of the fact that it really was so little, you know, it, it was kind of disappointing, the footage itself, just because... You know, I think when we heard there was going to be some teaser footage, I think a lot of us were maybe expecting that it would be a little more than just these cutscenes showcasing uh, Grudon and Kyogre. But, uh, you know, but it, the, the footage itself looks great. I mean, the, the models look great and the backgrounds look nice. I mean, it, it looks nice. I just wish there was more. Yeah, it's kind of interesting in that I think both of you, you weren't around when this footage came out. So you didn't have to deal with the, you know, with watching the Japanese program for an hour to get to this brief footage. And in the show, it was even off screen. So it wasn't terribly impressive. Uh, in that sense as well. But I think for anyone who wasn't aware of that, it probably caught them off guard that there was even going to be gameplay footage at all. And I think in that sense, it, it probably was impressive to a lot of people. So how about you, Derek? I don't know what your expectations were for this, but what did you think of the footage they showed? Well, the expect as far as expectations, I think everybody was sort of hoping for a, a, a much meatier trailer, sort of like the initial trailer for X and Y that sort of showed, gave a pretty good idea of what the game's going to be like. Right. Now, granted, we already kind of know what the game's going to be like by virtue of the fact that it's a remake. Um, so it actually is kind of cool that with this little teaser they gave us, it is all new footage, like not even anything that was in the original games. Uh, because, you know, we looked this over to see if, it, you know, if we could... Maybe do an analysis on it, even though it's only thirty seconds. And <laughs> that's what we do. Even less, because yeah, you know, that's what we do. So I'm looking over every like little frame of this, and I'm like, this is just extremely basic. Yep. I thought at first maybe it's like a new opening cutscene that shows off both of the, uh, you know, the, the legendaries. But upon closer inspection, this is actually the cut. This is actually a new, brand new cutscene for after Kyogre and Groudon awaken respectively in their games and they cause the world to start going haywire either with Groudon going um, causing the sun to become brighter and causing droughts or with Kyogre causing a massive amounts of rains and flooding mm -hmm. um, and you can even get there's even a nice little detail there, but there because the mount the island that you can see in the background at that as they come up is actually the island containing Pseudopolis City so that's even tied in plot wise there so that's just you know pretty good evidence that this is what the game's going to be like and yeah i mean it's it's very basic it's hard to go off from from this point but it is it does confirm a few things here that i think does make the game you know enticing yeah i mean i think the most interesting thing is the fact that this cussing is brand new um although interestingly you know this is from pretty late in the game um, so this is kind of a spoiler for anyone who hasn't played those games originally, right? <laughs> uh, a little bit, but this is, I mean, this is, yeah. Everybody. It's Pokemon. They're, I mean, on, the, right. they're on the cover. <laughs> you know they're yeah. going to show up at some point. <laughs> so I wonder if, you know, by the fact that this cutscene is is brand new, um, you know, actually conveying more of the story, uh, you know, through cinematics now, I wonder if that, I wonder if they're going to do things like that for the rest of the game, you know, um, add more story-based cutscenes, just liven it up a little bit. And I wonder how else they might enhance it. Um, do you guys have any ideas based on this? I mean, I could see it happening like Pokemon X and Y, where there are, you know, a, a, a 
small number of in-engine cutscenes throughout the story, but I mean there weren't really that many, so I don't think it's something that we can expect to see a lot of. Mm -hmm. uh, I could certainly expect to see it, you know, see other in-engine cutscenes throughout the the rest of the game, just not very many. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just going off of what they the cut, kind of cutscenes they showed off in X and Y, um, I mean there was a very small cutscene for the introduction of major characters. Um, and for for example, the professor. So we'll probably get to see uh, the prof the professor getting chased around by um, a Pokemon in this game. So that'll be kind of cute to watch. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's how you get your like he gets attacked and you have to pick up Pokeball in order to save him. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll probably get a used. It'll probably be used to be introduce the villains. Um, you know, just little stuff like that. I mean, these cutscenes in X and Y were never that long, so they're just sort of meant to spice up the story, and I think, you know, I'm all for that. <laughs> right. Okay, so we now know for sure that they're using the X and Y engine, but based on the similar art style, and the fact that there's even a disclaimer during the video saying that not the entire game will be in 3D, just like in X and Y, where only the battles and cutscenes are really worth in 3D. Um, so I'm just wondering what you guys thought about that, because to me, it never seemed like, you know, the overworld is that hardware intensive in X and Y, so I would have thought they could have used this time to figure out how to, you know, make that work in 3D. So it's just a little bit disappointing to me overall that they couldn't iron that out, but I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that. Uh, I, I agree with you, Andre. I, I really wanted to see them take this time to make the entire game 3D. Uh, I'm a big fan of the 3DS's 3D slider. I always play uh, all the uh, with games all the way on. But uh, with Pokemon X and Y, I didn't really, because it didn't really add that much mm -hmm. to the experience. Uh, um, now, Dungeons were 3D as well, actually. Okay. And so I, I did play uh, Dungeons with uh, 3D on, but other than that, it, would, it just chewed up my battery, and the, <laughs> the battles really didn't look very good in 3D, because it killed the frame rate. And, you know, when you, when you have something like Smash Brothers 3DS coming out and, you know, Sakurai saying, hey, the whole game is in 3D and 60 frames per second <laughs> right. for all the main characters, it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> why can't you guys figure this out? What's going on here? Yeah, I mean, uh, I really, and I, I thought Gen, uh, Generation 6's world, or X and Y's world, was really kind of beautiful to look at, and I really wanted to see it in 3D. So I was hoping that, that the eventual, you know, next time they use this engine, they would have figured out, you know, how to have 3D throughout the entire game, but I guess they haven't yet, unfortunately. Yeah. So in this cutscene here, you know, these Pokemon appear to be uh, represented just as they were in the original games. But uh, that is to say that they also look different than they do on the box art um, for these new games. And I know, Derek, you before thought that, you know, some people think those are the Mega Forms shown on the box. And I know you think otherwise. You think it might be some other new thing going on with them here. But I thought we'd get your thoughts on this, Ash. Um, what do you think is going on with the characters in the box art? Do you think that is their Mega Forms or do you think it could be, some it could be something else? I, I didn't actually c consider that that might be their mega forms. I just kind of thought it was just the, them trying to be kind of snazzy with the box art, to be honest. <laughs> which isn't a very exciting answer, but I, I just I kind of thought that was just them saying, "Hey, these are remakes. We're going to spruce up the box art a bit because otherwise it, they're fairly similar to the original box art." Uh, mm -hmm. And and so yeah, the, you got to do something to differentiate the two. And uh, I just kind of thought it was them trying to make it you know pop out a little more. Right. But of course now, but now that you say the mega mega evolution thing, that's entirely possible, and that would be. A cool, a cool twist to have uh, Mega Grudon and Mega Kyogre. Yeah, I mean, as again, as one who hasn't played those games, <laughs> um, to me, I think it would make sense to introduce Mega Forms in this game. Um, I don't know how that would work story-wise, but, I mean, it is a central gameplay mechanic from X and Y, and it, it, I think, to me, it would be weird that they don't use that, um, because it, is, it has become such a big thing now, but... Who knows, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we can safely assume that mega for other new mega evolutions will probably appear in this game. I mean, uh, I believe I saw some people in the comments mention that in the code for X and Y there was data for like Mega Latios and Mega Latios, mm -hmm. so they could be introduced in this game, uh, as well as poten even potentially you know Mega Groudon, Mega uh, Kyogre, and why not throw in Mega Rayquaza there? <laughs> um, but, you know, it's hard to say exactly. I saw another theory that the way, the reason that these guys go, you know, haywire and start, like, causing droughts and stuff is that when the evil teams try to control them, they use the opposite colors, uh, gem that represents them. So maybe they'll get powered up if you use the correct color gem to, you know, basically use them or give it to, give it to them to hold or mm -hmm. something to that effect to give them sort of a power up. Do you have any thoughts on that, Ash? Um, not, no, not really. That's, that's actually, that's a very in-depth, uh, theory. I mean, it's been years since I've played Pokemon, you know, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, so that, I mean, that definitely, uh, mines a little deeper than I think I remember all these years later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a theory people had, so I, 
thought I'd toss it out there. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah no, definitely. That's uh, that. It, it is interesting to kind of wonder if, if I mean, it seems to make sense that they have mega evolutions in uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but it's it's true that you know uh, timeline wise, you know, it's insofar it, or in as much that Pokemon has a timeline. <laughs> this is before <laughs> mega evolutions were you know quote unquote discovered. Right. So it is interesting to to wonder if they will kind of play fast and loose with this and and kind of retroactively uh, introduce them, kind of like they, they did with the uh, Pokemon Origins anime. Where they, you know, kind of introduced uh, uh, Mega Evolutions into Generation One. All right, would well, you guys have any final thoughts at all on um, this, either this teaser trailer or anything related to these games? Um, I'm just looking forward. Uh, personally, Generation Three had my favorite soundtrack uh, in the whole Pokemon series, and I like, you know, Pokemon music a lot. Mm-hmm. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how these remakes kind of update the soundtrack, and I'm just looking forward to, uh, yeah, just kind of just hearing, you know, Pokemon. Uh, Generation 3's music in kind of uh, the X and Y style. I, I basically have the same thoughts I had before where I just, I want this to impress me. I want this to sort of change my opinion on Gen 3 because I did come at it at, it at a weird time where I did enjoy uh, Diamond and Pearl a little bit more than Ash did and, and Ruby and Sapphire a little less than Ash did. <laughs> uh, so I'm wondering if it'll like shift so I actually like Ruby and Sapphire more after playing this game and I hope that's the case. Yeah, and we'll see if it gets me interested in Pokemon again. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> Nothing's uh, getting you back. <laughs> uh, you know what will bring me back? Pokemon Snap 2. That will do the trick. <laughs> eh, if only. Yep, if only. E- E3 is next month. You never know. You never know. And that, that would be a killer gamepad app, I would think, or a killer gamepad feature. So, otherwise, I think that wraps up our Pokemon Omega Ruby and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire discussion. So thanks, guys, for watching. If you like this discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. You can find links to them in the description below. Uh, we post all kinds of things there. It's a good way to keep up to date with everything we do post. And, of course, keep an eye on GameExplained.com for more on Pokemon and other things gaming as well. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.